Hello and welcome to another episode of Shed Weekly. Today we are going to look at the restoration of the Peugeot 101 moped. In last June 2015, I got the moped as a gift and then from there I started to do it up. I had to mainly paint it and that consists of the guards which are probably the worst part of the moped. So I put a picture up here of what the guards used to look like and then the picture up there about what the guards are like now. I did the most to them, by that I mean they were sanded down to bare metal, primed and then painted with the blue. With other parts I might have just sanded them down a bit, then sprayed them blue, but with these it was bare metal, then primed, then blue paint. And that's why they're probably the best part of the moped, because I've done the, pro the full paint job properly on them. And then behind me you're going to see a very fast time lapse of the few months, well of whatever the amount of months, of where I filmed me working on the moped. It's going to be very fast because there is hours of footage from where I've just been sat working on the moped. So that'll be two hours, which I've sped up by 20, which I'm, at, which I'm going to have to speed up by even more for the fact that I've just edited it now and it's going to take 45 minutes just to show that sped up by 20, so I'm going to have to speed it up even more. So it's going to be a very fast time lapse of what the video looks like. Yeah, if that makes sense. But anyway, so the moped. The moped started off as just rusty and covered in dirt. It wasn't too bad. Mechanically wise, it was basically sound. I had to buy a new fuel pump for it, well, a fuel filter thing. For it, fuel, fuel tap is a word. Because what happened was the one that we had has got full of dirt. I can actually get it here. If you've got it out, if you've got it out, where is it? There was this one. This is, a, this is the fuel filter, so what happened was, you know, fuel tap, I keep saying it wrong. So this was screwed into the tank there, this was on and off, which were, I think is on that way, off this way, and what happened on, what, what, uh, what had happened is, this has got blocked, I haven't got an air compressor, but when I do get one, I'll probably be able to fire this, and clean this, and then get this back on, but this was the main problem. When we tried starting it up before, it wouldn't work, so fuel wasn't feeding through. So once we got the new fuel tap, which is on it now, that made it work better. So every time I start it now, fuel goes straight down the pipe. You can see it go down, and it starts off straight away. So this is the original one. So that's being replaced by a new one now, which looks alright, but may, might put that one back on once we get an air compressor to fire it through. So apart from that, that was the main part. The other thing I broke was a spring on the um, stand. That was just for me. Yeah, it had, yeah. That was for me having a little thin piece of metal that went to a hole that bit of metal snapped and I was trying to take the metal off because I repainted the stand as well so I had to buy a new spring which is not the right one but it still works to some extent as a spring for the stand so that's alright the moped itself just a bit of paint here and there the bits which the bits the bits which are dark green well dark greeny dark blue they're plastic I'm gonna just leave as like the dark greeny colour because they're how the sun's affected it and it looks all right like that because it's plastic anyway I won't repaint them so it's a green slash blue bike or moped and that's how it's going to stay might do the tank again because the main part where if you look on the top of the tank where there's a bit of like craters where the paint's not been done properly I need to sand that down to bare metal prime it and then paint it blue but that takes time and money and I think I might just leave it like this for now and later on take it apart as such and then do the whole thing properly when I've got more equipment and more money to spend on it. So the moped itself is all sound now. I could get, up, get on it right now, ride it down and up the street, up and down the street, like it makes more sense. And it'd go perfectly fine. The brakes just need some work on because the pads are squeaking at the front and the back ones aren't working too well. I need to get new brake pads, stick them on the front and back, and that'll make it much better. It means I can use the brakes more rather than hearing a massive noise as I use them which is a bit annoying especially when I'm already on that so I don't want to get too much attention because everyone's already looking at me anyway because I'm on this tiny little thing with foam body armor stuff on but oh well safety first so your moped I'll talk more about the specification of the moped when you would first buy it how they like it 49cc the speeds that it can go more history on the bike next episode which should be next Sunday I hope if I get on with it where I'll film the bike going in motion and all that, nice footage, nice footage hopefully and then that's where I'll talk about all the history about the moped why it's like this and all that sort of thing but for this episode it's mainly on the restoration so it took me about a year to do it, it was on and off 
So I'd get it, once I got it, I'd tamper with it, then I'd put it in the shed, left it for a bit, and then I only really started on it in January this year. So you'd see on the footage where I actually used to paint the guards. It was just at the start of this year, even though I had it since June, because at that point I wasn't too bothered, plus I had college work. But the main other problem we had was the belt guard. When I've been trying to have it running, when we've had the pedal spinning round and I've had my foot on it going round, the guard for the belt would do it like this. While the pedal was spinning, so this is the pedal, pretend my foot's like on this bit spinning. This bit lifted out, the pedal went round, went into the plastic bit, that bit shattered, which I'll put onto a picture here. So that was one of the main problems we had recently, was trying to glue this bit back together. To look so it looks like the bit really because what happened was we found online on a very popular auction website that you'll all probably know the bit which is very similar but for a 102 plus it was from france and it cost 40 pounds and we're like we're not spending 40 pounds on this piece of plastic we'll fix ours so we did to some extent and for now it's working out quite well it may catch a little bit but it's not catching too much to cause a problem so for now we'll leave it like it is but if we find one we probably will fit it with that but besides from that it's pretty good it's just mainly needed paint and that's about it it's a nice little thing i'll probably keep it for a while i don't know how much it's worth a 103 went for 180 at this auction i would probably sell out unless i sell it through a private person well just to a person but i probably won't sell it but if you'd like to say how much you'd pay for it go ahead in the comments it gives me an idea if i do sell it to buy a bigger project but i don't want to sell it really because i quite like it it's a nice color plus it goes with the blue on the um textile back jacket i've got which you saw in the last episode which i was wearing if you look here i think it is the blue there's some blue stripes here so it lo looks nice with that so it's quite a nice thing to keep but anyway going for going on from buying a bigger bike, I am looking for a BSA Bantam D1, which is a 125, which you'll probably know if you've got one. If you've got one of those in the condition of what my moped was in, so basically it needs painting, however most of the bits are all there, so the engine's there in all one piece. If the grips are knackered or foot things and all that are a bit worn, I can get new ones. But if you've got a BSA Bantam D1, it's the one two five in the off shed. Just needs more paint. Send me a message because I'm looking to buy one at the moment. Because I've got my one two five license, and obviously the moped's a forty nine cc. Bantams are one two five, so it's much faster. And I want one at some point because I've got a thing that I'm trying to think of about. Do that makes no sense. I've got an idea on what I want to do when I get this bike going. But this, besides from filming it for this. I have a plan that could be a bit of fun for me to do for a week, which could be quite dangerous, but it's something to do. But anyway, I've probably spoken enough for that thing to get for the video behind me to be quick enough to finish. So yeah, thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe. It really helps at the moment while I'm trying to get this channel started. I know the videos aren't great, but it is just me. I would like to do better stuff, but it's quite hard when I'm not used to this type of thing. Filming it wise, when I do a new restoration, I will film it better. I will have better camera angles. Talk more through, because at the moment, when you've just seen that video, it's just one angle. This happening, cut to another angle, a different day. When I'm actually working on the next bike, which probably will be a BSA, I will make sure to film in different ways and different angles. More angles, more cameras, all at once, so I can cut through it, make a nicer video. Because what I'll do is, if I get it, let's say I got one next week, every Sunday would be a episode of me what I've done on the bike that week so let's say I took it apart and I'll show the footage of each day when I've been tampering with it and then I'll go from there so yeah thank you for watching like I said like and subscribe please share around to all your friends and that to get this thing going more and thank you for everyone who watched the previous video I know it's not great none of them are gonna be but thank you for watching it anyway and yeah thank you for watching and goodbye I hope you enjoyed the video the footage there's quite a lot. I've also got quite a lot of pictures as well, which I'll put onto a blog of some sorts. All the pictures, there's about, if I said 10,000, 5,000, there probably will be that many. So if I can find a way to put all those on and then you to look at them, I'll probably put a link below and then say in the next video that I've done it. And you can look at all those. So yeah, thank you for watching and farewell. I don't know why I say farewell, I'll just say goodbye, goodbye!